All right, so we're going to start the presentation. Okay, so this is Matt from Optimus Futures, and uh, we're very, very privileged to uh, carry right now the Trade Station brand and software. And um, basically, we um, have the ability to support traders through uh, Trade Station. Trade Station naturally has been around for a very, very long time. It's a really good platform. Um, there's many traders on it and so forth. I'm going to give you a link directly to our page so you have it. Okay, this is our main page for um, TradeStation. And you have all the features here, the pricing, everything else. Um, the number one question that we always get asked is, we actually get asked two questions are, do we add any commissions on top of, for example, what TradeStation does? The answer is no. Uh, the second question is, you know, why would you guys go through us and not directly through TradeStation? Uh, basically, um, I always tell them that I, I'd like to think that I add, you know, a new level of service that everything can go through us directly and so forth. So I have the privilege of having um, Jesus over here from um, TradeStation. He's been there for a very long time. Is um, is going to present the platform. Um, I've, I've met Jesus in person uh, a few months ago and uh, basically really impressed me with his knowledge and <clears throat> I think he's the right person to uh, present you guys with all the features the trade station has. So um, I'm going to uh, give right now, before I give the stage to Jesus, I just want to read the disclaimer here at the bottom and just remind everyone that trading futures and options involve a substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. You should only use your risk capital. Past performance is not indicative of future results. And the futures trading business in general is very leveraged. So can, you can have substantial wins and substantial losses. So trade carefully. Consider your uh, financial situation uh, when you do that. Um, just in general, just so you know, Obviously, today everything is done over the internet. So just consider the fact that you know you always need to create redundancy, have our phone numbers, and everything else in case your internet goes down, the software goes down, and so forth. Um, in any case, I'm going to give the stage right now to uh, Mr. Jesus Nava uh, from Trade Station directly. And Jesus, I'm very, very grateful that you came here, and I'm looking forward to uh, hearing you in, your, in, uh, in this presentation. Um, one thing I would ask everyone, that's the last thing, please allow Jesus to walk through the software. He's going to show you all as much as he can within the time constraints, all the futures trading features that exist on TradeStation. Um, but please uh, allow him uh, to present uh, what he has to present. And then uh, 45 minutes into the presentation or half an hour, whenever Jesus is done, then you can ask him all the questions. In the meantime, just write it down on a piece of paper. I just don't like to distract our presenters because they have a clear line of how they want to progress from one thing to another and show you. Um, Jesus, again, thank you. We're very, I'm very, very grateful that you came here. Go ahead and... Thank you, Matt. It's a real pleasure to be here. Um, just wanted to make sure that you guys can hear me. So let's do a sound check. Um, can you let me know in the chat window if you can hear me? Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much for confirming that we have good sound. Um, as I was saying at the beginning, it's a real pleasure to be here with all of you, uh, especially presenting some of the tools here of TradeStation. Let me start my desktop sharing here so you can see my screen. Um, all right. There we go. I was looking for my desktop sharing button and now I see it. Give me just a minute while I turn this on. Okay, everyone should see my screen. I have a PowerPoint that has a title of my presentation, TradeStation, Tools for the Disciplined Trader. 
um, we're going to concentrate on some of the features in TradeStation that um, are specially designed for those that are considered disciplined, especially the area of strategy testing and uh, the ability for you to set uh, targets and stops with your trades. Those are features that are very um, common and in TradeStation are, and are used very frequently, and I wanted to go over that functionality so that you can see what TradeStation is capable of. As uh, Matt said in the introduction, my name is Jesus Nava. I am the Director of Client Training and Education here at TradeStation. So my job here in the company is to develop educational content so that um, it makes it easier for those that are just getting started with the platform to use the functionality to their advantage and, 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 and use it to the maximum of, uh, of its power because uh, TradeStation has become a very sophisticated software and sometimes um, we do need you know that hand holding or somebody that takes us step by step through the functionality so that we can understand it fully. Uh, I am going to piggyback on Matt's um, disclaimer at the beginning of the presentation. Uh, keep in mind that every symbol and idea that I present here is for educational purposes only. It is not a recommendation of TradeStation. And also keep in mind that active trading is not suitable for everyone. It should only be done with risk capital. We're going to take a look at some uh, performance reports, some strategies, and uh, just keep in mind that performance on a strategy is not indicative of any future uh, results. So let me go ahead and switch over to TradeStation so that I can show you some of the functionality that is in there. This is the TradeStation platform. Everyone in TradeStation gets access to a trading simulator. So you don't have to risk your own capital, especially at the beginning when you're getting familiarized with the TradeStation functionality. You can use the trading simulator to practice trading or maybe test a trading idea. On my TradeStation right now, I am connected to the trading simulator. And if you see my cursor on the screen, if you look here at the bottom of my trade station, you're going to notice that it says trading sim at the bottom. So it's a quick way for you to glance at your trade station and know if you're connected to the simulator or not. At the time that you log on, you're going to be prompted to log on either to your live account or the trading simulator. And as I said before, trading simulator, it's a great tool for you to get used to the functionality and also test certain ideas that you may have in the market. At the very top of TradeStation, we see what's called the TradeStation order bar. Uh, TradeStation is a multi-asset platform. I know that you mainly concentrate on futures and future options, but you can see here on the top left that we have tabs for equities, options, futures, and Forex. So um, having the ability to have your trading accounts connected to just one single platform is great. And the ability for you to switch back and forth between the tabs and being, being able to trade different assets is also a benefit of TradeStation. I am not going to use the order bar now. I consider the order bar a manual order entry facility. So it does require you to manually set up your order before you can click on buy and sell. Personally, I think there are other tools in TradeStation that are a little bit more efficient. It allows you to place orders a little bit more uh, quickly. So we're going to look at those uh, order entry tools in a little moment. Uh, towards the end of my presentation, I'll show you the matrix and the ability for you to place trades on a chart, which I think, as I said earlier, are a little bit more efficient than the order bar here on top. But since we're not going to use the order bar, I'm just going to click here on the X on the very top left corner of the order bar to remove it. The bar you see here uh, below the order bar, now it's uh, the bar you see uh, at the top, is called the position graph bar. The position graph bar, as the name implies, is going to be an area where you see every open position you have in your account. At this moment, I don't have any open positions. That's why it's blank. It only shows you the three main indexes. We have the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, and the, and the S&P. You have the ability to format those symbols if you want to add any symbols to the top list or if you want to remove any of the indexes that are there. This is fully customizable. And that's one of the things you're going to see about TradeStation, that TradeStation can be customized in any way so that it fits your trading style. Not only your trading style, but your preferences in regards to color, in regards to style. Everything can be customized in TradeStation. 
Below the position graph bar, I have a chart. The chart is of the S&P E-mini futures. You see here on the top left corner, the symbol is ESZ15. Symbology sometimes changes from broker to broker. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about symbology and the symbols that are available in TradeStation for you to create chart analysis. In my screen right now, I have a 15-minute chart. You see that on the top left corner as well. Uh, formatting the chart or changing the symbol on the chart is very simple in TradeStation. Uh, TradeStation is very sensitive to keyboard commands. So a lot of the things that you want to do to a chart analysis are going to be done through your keyboard. Let's say, for example, that you want to change the symbol of the graph to something different. Let's do, uh, for example, the NASDAQ. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to type in NQZ15. Um, of course, you're not you're not able to see me type. However, I am using my keyboard and every letter that I pressed on my keyboard shows up here at the top of my trade station. I'm not sure if you notice here on the top, this is called the command line. And every time you use your keyboard, trade station is going to listen to that command and put it up there. This is a command line. And as soon as I hit enter, you're going to see how the chart changes to the NASDAQ 100 and it's going to load the chart on my screen. Okay, so it's just a matter of typing the symbol in and hitting enter for you to switch the chart. Let me go ahead and switch back to the S&P E-mini. ESZ15, I'm typing it in and hitting enter. The same goes for the time interval. I did say earlier that this is a 15-minute chart. Keyboard commands are very simple to use in TradeStation. If I type in a 5, just the number 5, and I hit enter, it changes the chart to a 5-minute. And every number that I use, TradeStation is going to use that as a minute interval. So if I type in 30 and hit enter, I have a 30-minute chart. If I type in 60 and hit enter, this is a 60-minute chart. Very simply, I'm able to load all the data on my chart. Let me go back to 15 minutes. Okay. TradeStation also prides itself in the amount of historical data that is available for you to use. Uh, in TradeStation, we have over 60 years of daily data. So for any futures that you want to load historical data for, we have, uh, depending on the futures contract, of course, uh, we have up to or even a little bit over 60 years on a daily interval. If you want to have more um, uh, or a finer data interval, you can go to a minute interval and we have over 25 years of intraday data. Now, this is very important, especially if you want to analyze the markets, uh, whether you're using you know, technical indicators or a strategy, the ability for you to load historical data and test your ideas against different segments of history where the market behaved uh, differently is a, it's a great asset. Having all that historical data and being able to test your ideas on that historical data. We're going to talk a little bit about that in a moment, but here I have a 15 minute chart of the S&P e mini 500. Uh, this is the futures contract, uh, is the December contract, which is the front month. And you're going to notice that if I scroll back on this chart, I have one year worth of uh, history here. Actually, not yet. Let me load it up here. Okay, I have it. There we go. We have a one year of historical data. If I scroll back on this chart, you're going to see that um, when I look, go back in history, the data gets a little bit spotty because this is a very specific uh, month and year contract. This is a December contract. And as a future trader, you may know that at the beginning of the life of the contract, volume is very light. When this is not the front month, uh, it, it's very lightly traded. And that's why the data looks like that. spot continuous symbols in trade station are built using the at sign the one we use for email so for this particular contract if i type in at es and i hit enter i get the full continuation of prices so now if i scroll back and i go to the beginning of the chart notice how the chart doesn't look spotty anymore because it fills in the data with previous contracts so any trader that wants to load historical data on futures, they use a continuous contract by adding the at sign and the root of the symbol. It gives you the continuation of prices. In this particular example, 
I have the S&P E-mini 500 and I have coupled it with um, what's called a Bollinger Band. If you're familiar with technical analysis, you know that Bollinger Band is a great tool to identify extremes in price movement. Let me explain. When you look at the Bollinger Band, by the way, I was able to expand the spacing between bars by using the up arrow keys. And the down arrow key on my keyboard allows me to compress the data. Very easily, I can do that on the chart to expand and compress the data. Well, the Bollinger Band idea, uh, first of all, is calculated by, by using this moving average right here in the middle. The gray line that you see there in the middle is just a simple moving average. But then it calculates standard deviations above and below. So the blue line is two standard deviations above, and the red line is two standard deviations below. Under the Bollinger concept, the Bollinger Band concept, 95% of all the price points are going to be inside the channel between the blue line and between the red line. Whenever you see price points that are above the blue line or price points like, for example, here that are below the red line, it is said that the data has reached an extreme and it's very likely for the data to bounce and go back in the opposite direction. So whenever we have uh, this penetration of the blue line, and the data starts coming down, we expect the data to continue to go down and go back to where the average is. You know, and that's the, that's the nature of the Bollinger Band. We're looking for those extremes. Now, the idea here is for you to take a short trade when the price data breaks the upper band and take a long trade when the price breaks the bottom band. You know, taking advantage of that bounce in the Bollinger Band. It would be great for you to know if you had traded that idea from the beginning of the historical data on this chart, how much your strategy would have generated or not. And that is something that you can do on TradeStation. You can take a simple idea, apply it to historical data, and see if that idea would have generated profits or not. Of course, we have to emphasize the fact that historical performance does not guarantee future results. So the fact that we make money in a historical backtest doesn't guarantee that you're going to make the same amount going forward. But it is a great tool for you to validate an idea and see if it's something sound, something that you can rely on, and something that you can trade going forward. So let's go ahead and take this Bollinger Band idea and use some of the tools in TradeStation to test it. In TradeStation, there are dozens of strategies that are based on technical ideas. I'm going to go here to the Insert menu and click on Strategy. And some of the strategies that I'm going to use here are the Bollinger Bands. There's two of them because one is for my long entries and the other is for my short entries. So I'm going to select them both. And um, let's see what it, what it looks like when I put them on the chart. As soon as I put the strategy on the chart, you're going to see how it's going to find every single instance where the strategy would have generated a trade. Now, the trades here, or the signals you see, are based on the Bollinger Band concept. What is it? Well, we're looking for those penetrations on the upper band and the lower band. If it penetrates the upper band and it returns inside the channel, that's a short signal. If it penetrates the bottom band and it goes inside the channel again, that's a short, that's a long signal. You're going to see that in this chart, every single time that the strategy met the criteria, it's going to give you a signal. So it puts a trade in. It also gives you the net position. So if you see a negative one, that means that you're short one contract. If you see a positive one, that means you're long one contract. It also gives you a dotted line between the signals. So whenever... Um, uh, a blue line appears, that means that it's a profitable trade. But whenever you see a red line, that's a losing trade. TradeStation compiles all the data that's here and puts it in into a performance report. Let's take a look at the performance report and see what the strategy looks like. Uh, it's right over here. This tool right here on the top on the toolbar gives me access to the strategy performance report. I'm just going to click on it. And this window shows up. It's a report filled with information about how the strategy did. You can see that there's a column for all trades. So it combines the performance of long trades and short trades, and it also separates them. So you can see which side of the strategy is doing better, the long side or the short side. 
Because of time, of course, we can't really go into the details of this performance report, but it does provide you a way for you to validate an idea. Does this idea make sense um, in, historical, in historical data? You know, you're using historical data to generate all these signals based on specific rules of the Bollinger Band. Now, this is a very simple idea, of course. This is not a complete strategy, but it does show you that TradeStation can help you take an idea, apply it to historical data, and have at least some confidence that the strategy will go and work going forward. Now, you can see that this example right here, the net profit is negative, so it wasn't a good strategy at all. I just wanted to grab something out of the box and show it to you here on the screen. Now, let me talk about a couple things here on the chart. This is a, um, a chart of the S&P E-mini 500. It's a 24-hour market, or almost 24 hours. If we look at the sessions of the S&P E-mini, it starts trading at uh, 5 p.m. and it goes all the way to 4 p.m. So I think there's a one-hour break. So almost a 24-hour market. So there's an overnight session that it's very lightly traded. In fact, when I was setting up this workspace, I was looking at other indicators that I'm going to show you here. If I go to the instrument menu and I go to indicator, you have, you know, dozens of technical indicators that are popular in the industry. So if you're looking for a Bollinger Band or a MACD, those are already built into TradeStation. You don't have to program them. Uh, one indicator that I like, it's volume average. I like volume average because it gives you an average of volume. And you can see when, and when bars exceed that average by, you know, a certain percentage. But I'm just going to insert the volume average on my screen. And you're going to see something really clear on, 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 on the volume indicator. You're going to see that the overnight session has very little volume. In fact, you can see how the bars are almost invisible because of how low the volume turns overnight. So most of the time, as a futures trader, uh, we are interested in what's happening when volume is high. For you know, the ability for you to get in and out of positions quickly, you want to be able to have enough liquidity so that if you're buying, uh, there's a seller on the other side, or if you're selling, there's a buyer on the other side. So a lot of times you want to remove the overnight and just concentrate on what's happening during the day. A way to do that is by using a variation of the symbol that we have on the screen. Right now we have the continuous symbol of the S&P 500. I'm going to change it to something that it's going to allow me to remove the overnight, and that is uh, the same symbol well, with, the, with a dot D at the very end. And this is D for day. This is the type of symbol that's going to show you just a day session. So at ES dot D. Take a look at the symbol here on the top left. You can see at ES dot D. Uh, notice how the strategy recalculates. Take a look at volume here at the bottom. Now those gaps in volume or those flat lines of volume are pretty much removed because now you're only concentrated on what's happening between the hours where the S&P e-mini contract is traded um, most. Now the strategy recalculates and let's see how the strategy performance changes. Now we do see a big change here in the strategy performance report. Why? Well, something, some things to think about. Well, first of all, you are removing data from the chart. So the strategy is not using the overnight you know, data. So any trades or any signals that were generated overnight are removed from the strategy performance report. Also keep in mind that by doing that, you are holding you know, these trades overnight and you're exposed to any price movements that happen overnight or any drawdowns that happen overnight that are not reflected on the chart. So some things to think about as well. But by removing the activity that happens overnight, notice how the strategy seems to be doing better. And as I said before, this is not a complete strategy. I'm not showing you this so that you can, you know, turn it on and let it trade by itself because there's a lot more work that needs to be done on this strategy because it has no risk management. It has no way of protecting you from losses. So there's a lot of work to do. But I did want to show you this um, feature because it does give you the ability to test ideas against historical data and, uh, and gauge their effectiveness when uh, applied and um, to that data. One thing that I do want to show you is 
the ability for you to take this strategy and turn it on for automation. There's a checkbox here that allows me to automate the strategy and automate it using my simulator. Of course, when you automate a strategy, you're going to get a disclaimer that is really important to read. Once you agree, I'm automating the strategy for execution. What does that mean? It means that the strategy will follow the rules and whenever those rules are met, it's going to generate a, an order and it's going to ask you, uh, the strategy is going to enter a trade. Do you agree? Do you accept it? That's with confirmations on. That's why you would have a confirmation drop down here. But you can click on that drop down and turn confirmations off, get another disclaimer. And this is the way that you fully automate a strategy, a strategy that is trading for you. Uh, on your computer and whenever the rules of your strategy are met the strategy will automatically send a trade for you nice feature nice functionality it's great that we can turn it on in the simulator so you can test ideas and see how they're traded going forward all right let me jump over to another topic i wanted to show you this feature because i think it's one of the highlights of trade station uh, the ability for you to take an idea and test it against historical data. But let me show you some other tools that are great when uh, talking about, you know, looking for trading opportunities. Uh, one of the most powerful scanning tools in TradeStation, which is called Radar Screen. Let me switch over here to another workspace that I have. This is my Radar Screen workspace. Uh, the window that you see on the left hand side is my Radar Screen. And I've um, included This is still loading right here, but that's that's fine. Um, I've included a workspace that has groups of futures. We have some indices, some financial futures, some grain, energies, and so forth. And they're grouped by, by category. Now, this radar screen is linked to the chart that's on the right-hand side. So when I click on any of the future symbols here in my radar screen, let's say that I click on uh, the euro future. At EC, you see how the chart automatically changes to the euro, and I can see that futures contract. So nice functionality of being able to link windows together so that when you click on a symbol, it changes all the windows that are connected. If you're interested in this functionality, it is uh, those little buttons that you see on the title bar, the S and the I. The S is for symbol, the I is for interval, so you can link intervals and you can link, link symbols. But any window that is connected under this same S color is going to take that symbol and, and change it. So nice, nice feature of being able to link windows together. This avoids you, I mean avoids um, the problem of having to you know change every symbol or every window individually. Now one of the things that sets radar screen apart from any regular quotes window out there because at a glance, that's what it looks like, just a regular quotes window. But something that sets radar screen apart from any regular quotes window is ability that it, the ability to load historical data for each one of the symbols that are loaded here. And let me try to explain. Do you see this column labeled interval and it's set to daily? This means that radar screen is loading daily data on every symbol that is here. So every row that I have included in my radar screen is acting as a chart analysis. But instead of having, you know, 40 or 50 individual charts open, I just have one single window with all my futures listed and they're loading historical data in the background. Now, what is, what is, the, what is the reason or what is the purpose of loading historical data in this table? Well, the reason for it is because these columns that I have on the right-hand side starting here, the Bollinger Band, Momentum, and RSI. These are columns that require historical data. This is like having the technical analysis that you see on a chart, but now you're inserting them in a spreadsheet format. So I can keep track of all these 40 different future symbols and look at the Bollinger Band indicator, the Momentum indicator, and the RSI indicator on all those 40 symbols at the same time. Not only that, but I can turn on the alert on any of these indicators. So let's say, for example, that 
Bollinger Band is the idea that I want to trade. You know, it'd be great for me to know which one of the futures uh, is actually crossing the bands of the Bollinger Bands. By formatting the Bollinger Band, I'm able to turn on an alert. I know it's hard to see on the screen, but every single cell of my Bollinger Band has a little blue triangle on the top right corner. I know it's hard to see, but if you look closely, you can see a, a, the corner is blue. That is an alert that is turned on and is being monitored in real time for the Bollinger Band. Whenever the Bollinger Band generates an alert, it's going to show me a little yellow marker. If you take a look at where my cursor is, you can see that there's a yellow marker in the cell for feeder cattle. And there's another yellow marker for live cattle. And if I scroll down, I see a yellow marker for silver and a yellow marker for gold, I mean for copper. I'm just looking at the description here on the left-hand side. So yellow marker for silver. You also see a yellow marker for copper. So if I go here to copper and I click on the symbol for copper, I can load the copper symbol here in my chart and I can look at the indicators. And if you look here on the Bollinger Band, you can see how the data penetrated the red band and it's returning inside the channel therefore triggering the alert so always having a chart linked to my radar screen allows me to see the visual let's take a look at another indicator like for example the rsi everyone is familiar with an rsi it's a very popular indicator i also see that lean hogs are generating an alert for the rsi if i click on the symbol for lean hogs at LH, and I load it here in my chart, I can see clearly how the RSI indicator is triggering the alert. Notice how the contract was oversold, and all of a sudden it's returning or crossing above the overbought level. So it's a trading signal. That's a long trading signal if you understand the RSI and what it's looking for. But the, 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 the powerful thing and the interesting thing about radar screen is that I have all these futures with three technical analysis that are monitoring my futures in real time. And whenever any of these futures contracts are triggering the alert on any of these indicators, I'm going to be notified. Now, in this example, I get notified visually so I can look at all the yellow markers and see which ones are the ones that are triggering the alert. But if you want to set up an alert uh, that actually, you know, sends you a, um, gives you a pop-up message or maybe fires off a, a sound or a siren or even sends an email to your email address, those are, you know, preferences that you can set up in, in TradeStation when you format an alert. So having radar screen, which is a real-time scanner, allows you to get notified whenever something is happening on a particular futures contract. Now, of course, I did show you some indicators that are default in TradeStation, like Bollinger Bands and Momentum and RSI. Those are already built into the platform and they're available for you to use and play around with. But what if you had a, you know, a personal idea, your own trading idea that you want to keep an eye on? Anything in TradeStation can be customized and can be created. So if you bring in calculations that you want to test in TradeStation, or if you bring in an idea and you want to be alerted when something is happening, but it's not something that is built into TradeStation, it can be created. I'm not sure if you've heard of something called Easy Language in TradeStation, which is a programming language. So anything that you want to build in TradeStation, you can. So, and radar screen and charting are tools that will use those custom indicators if you want to use them in that manner. You know, if you want to get alerts, if you want to see them on a graph, uh, the same way that we see Bollinger, Momentum, and RSI here, you can also see your custom analysis techniques. Okay, so we've talked about two features in TradeStation. Let me summarize so that we can keep track of what we've talked about and what we're going to talk next. We've talked about strategy testing, you know, technical analysis, indicators. Uh, we talked about charting, how to change the symbol, how to change the data interval. We talked about continuous symbols. 
Um, we back tested the Bollinger Band strategy. That can be done also with any trading idea you may have. Historical data is available for you to use in, in charting. So it's a great tool. And then we talked about radar screen, you know, real time scanning. You have your technical analysis and you're looking for opportunities to trade. This window will actually fire off signals, letting you know that something's happening on a particular symbol. Let's go over and see uh, some trading tools. Because once you get alerted and you know that something's happening, you want to be able to place some trades. Maybe you're not a fan of strategy automation. No, you do use you know, the backtest tool to uh, gauge the effectiveness of a strategy, but um, you, you're probably not looking to automate a strategy. You want to do everything uh, manually. That's fine. You can still use you know, the strategy backtest tool to measure the performance of an idea, but then go and use our trading tools to put in your trades. Let me show you a couple. Let me come over here to this other workspace. And here on the left-hand side, we have a, an order entry tool called the Matrix. The Matrix is one of the most efficient trading tools we have available in TradeStation. And let's, uh, let's take a look at something here so that we can put in some trades. I'm going to load up a symbol for, in fact, let's use the same one that we were using before, ESZ15. And the same way that you do it on a chart, I just uh, click on the window, type in the symbol ESZ15, hit enter, and it loads the symbol on my screen. All right. Let me give you a little bit of geography of what you're looking at. Uh, some of you may not be familiar with this style of trading, but right here in the middle column, we see the prices that are traded for the S&P E-mini futures. The one that is highlighted in yellow, that is the last traded price. And the number one to the left is just the size of the last trade. So you know that there was a, the last trade was for one contract of the S&P E-mini. You see the green bar down here? That's the low of the trading session, 2067.75. And if I scroll up, you're going to see a similar green bar, which identifies the high of the day, of the trading session, 2087.25. Now, this market hasn't opened yet. Uh, I believe it should have opened already, but I don't see the ability for trading. Let me see if I can uh, maybe load something that it's open for trading. Let me check the session times for the S&P. By the way, for checking any properties of any symbol, like over here on the chart, I can double click on any of the candles here. You see properties of the symbol, like expiration date, notice date, what the big point value is, and so forth. And you also have access to the session. So if I go here to session, this is supposed to start at 5 p.m. And session times are based on exchange time. So 5 p.m. is our 6 p.m. So 5 p.m. is 6 p.m. Eastern. It's not until 6 p.m. when the actual S&P E-mini trades. So let's go ahead and look at something else that is open right now. Let's go ahead and take a look at um, crude oil, for example. So CL, let's see. Crude oil is right here. Let me go to a symbol that actually can be traded. Let me turn off the link here. So CLZ15. Let me check the times here for this one. It may be closed also. It starts at 6 p.m. Ends at 5 p.m. Yeah, we should, should be able to trade it. Not really sure why it's not showing here. Hmm. I see the question um, in the chat uh, using at symbols in the matrix. The matrix is going to look for a symbol that you can trade. So if you load up an at or a continuous symbol in the matrix, the at symbol is not a symbol that you can trade. Although there are some tradable symbols by just uh, using at and the full symbol. So if I do at CLZ15, that should be a tradable symbol right there. At CLZ15. So you just have to use the full symbol with an at sign because sometimes we want to load the historical data and at the same time be being able to trade it. 
So it's very important to use that 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 symbology. All right. Okay. Let me see if I can bring in from my radar screen any other symbols that are tradable. Give me just a moment. Those are our futures traders. Are there any futures that are trading right now that you know of that we can probably use as an example? This is silver. Oh, TF, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. And think of the Russell. Thank you very much, uh, Ramin. Thank you for the suggestion. This is TF. Z15, the Mini Russell 2000, December 2015 contract. Um, the matrix, I was showing you the matrix, and the blue column, the red column, are my order entry columns. Uh, you're going to see some numbers inside the cells of the blue and the red. The numbers represent the number of contracts that are waiting to get filled at each one of these prices. So you see the blue are the buyers, and the buyer, of course, always wants a lower price. And then you have the red, which are the sellers. So we want, uh, of course, the seller wants a higher price. So there's going to be the inverse uh, relationship here. And somewhere in the middle, of course, we have the last traded price. So as a trader on any futures contract, if you're a buyer, you're going to join the blue. If you're the seller, you're going to join the red. Now I want you to take a look at what happens when you hover over the red and you hover over the blue. If you take a look at on the left-hand side, under the orders column, the matrix is getting ready to buy or sell. I haven't even clicked. It's just hovering over the blue or the red. The matrix knows that it would have to send a limit order if I'm below the market to buy or a stop order if I'm above the market to buy. If you're going to be selling the contract and you go over here on the red, this will be a sell limit order. And if I go below the market, it's going to be a sell stop order. So the matrix is also smart in knowing the type of order that is going to be sent uh, in relationship to the current trading price. Let's say, for example, that I'm interested in buying the Russell 2000 at 1174.50. Right here, 1174.50. What I do is I come over here to the blue and I click once. When I do that, this is my order confirmation. Buy one contract of TFZ15 at 1174.50 uh, limit. It gives me information about how much margin is required and what my estimated commission will be. Once I'm familiarized with this confirmation windows, sometimes having to click OK to confirmation windows uh, gets a little bit tiring, especially if you're getting in and out you know, throughout the day many times you just want to avoid having to have this extra step. There's a checkbox here that says, don't show me this again for matrix futures orders. So if you don't want to have an extra click on the confirmation, just disable it and just say yes. My order is right there. So that gray little row, that gray box that you see there, that's my order. If I hover over the order, I have the ability to cancel it. And with one click, I'm able to cancel that order. It just goes away. Let me enter that order one more time. I come over here to 1174.50. I click once, and the order is in. The order is also very easily adjusted by clicking and dragging. So if I click that order and I bring it down five ticks, it cancels the original order and places a new one. And you can do that in any direction. 
So if I click on that order and I raise it five ticks and release it, notice how now it just cancels the original and places a new one. It makes it very easy for you to cancel, replace an order by just clicking and dragging. If I want to get filled right now, I'm going to join the ask right here, which is 1175. I'm just going to drag that order to 1175 and release. Order filled. Trade Station gives me an audible confirmation that I got filled. It highlights with a horizontal bar what my entry price was, 1175. And it also shows me real time PL on the left hand side. So as the Russell 2000 ticks up or down, I see how much money I'm making or losing. Now I can use the PL here on the left hand side to set um, targets and stops. So let's say, for example, if I come over here to the top and I say and hover over the 100, I can say, well, if the Russell reaches this level, which is the price of 1176, but I'm hovering here over the 100, where I can see if it reaches a $100 profit, I want to sell there. So I can click here where the 100 is, and it sends an order to sell one contract when it reaches that level. And I can do the same thing on the bottom side. So if it drops to a certain level, I sell the contract. Now when you do that, and you have to be careful when you do that because I, I've just sent two different orders to sell at a profit and to sell at a loss, but they're not connected in any way. So if one of those orders gets filled, the other one remains there. You want to have a way of connecting orders so that if one gets filled, the other gets canceled. You don't want to leave an order there in the market without knowing. So let me go ahead and cancel these orders and show you a functionality called OCO, which is an order cancels order. If you look here on the right hand side, there is a gray button that says place OCO order. We have different orders that you can enter in this drop down. I'm going to use just one as an example, which is this exit bracket, one limit, one stop. It's a bracket order. If you want to format the distance, you can do that by clicking here on the ellipsis. If I click over, it says the price off that is 10 ticks or 10 minimum increments. I'm just gonna, I'm, not gonna, I'm just gonna use the defaults. I'm not gonna change uh, I'm not, uh, to avoid, you know, complicating this class. I'm just gonna show you the functionality, but um, I'm just gonna use the defaults and click on this gray button, place OCO order, and take a look at what happens. It sends those two orders that I had previously, but now the difference is that those two orders are connected, which means that if one gets filled, the other one gets canceled. And that's a, a right behavior that we, we need here. Uh, but if, if it hits our profit, it takes us out. But if it hits our loss, it takes us out as well, and it cancels the other side. Okay. I see a comment here about having different levels of... Um, of uh, offers, asks, bids and asks. I see different levels here of bid and ask information. That it's something that it needs to be enabled in your entitlements. So you need to subscribe to the data that we're seeing here. Uh, my account is probably enabled for uh, market depth in the ICE exchange. Uh, the Russell 2000 trades in the ICE exchange. So you have to make sure that your account is enabled for that data so that you can get the, the full market depth here. All right. I'm going to use the yellow buttons here on the right to cancel all my orders or all the active orders. And I'm going to use the close button here to close my position. The close is just a market order to close whatever you have on the screen. So I have the Russell 2000. So by clicking on close, order filled. sends a market order to sell whatever number of contracts I have for the Russell 2000. Now let me show you one other setup because I know that we're running out of time here, but I know this is a uh, very interesting to do is the ability for you to do this whole entry and exit in just one single trade. We do that with the checkbox here that says attach OSO. So what we're going to do, we have an entry order to which we are going to attach a bracket all in one click. So here we use the same bracket, which is one limit, one stop. We're not gonna format it, we're just gonna use the defaults. So when I click on my original order to buy at 1174.50, I hover over the blue, click once, and take a look at what happens. Three orders are placed with one click. 
I got my entry order waiting for the Russell to hit 1174.50. But at the same time, I have this bracket, which is shown in green because those are queued orders. They are connected to the primary, which is my entry order. Once I get filled at 1174.50, that bracket is going to be in place and active monitoring my target and monitoring my stop. So great features. All these orders that I've just placed are independent so that I can click and drag. So if I click and drag my target, notice how it changes. I can do the same thing for the stop. So I can change those orders around. If you move the primary though, if I move the primary to a different level, the whole setup shifts. Because remember that the bracket is based off the primary. So if you move the primary, of course, the bracket will shift with it. But it's uh, use the functionality in the single leader so you can get used to this feature because I think it's very efficient for you to just click on the on the matrix and send the orders with um, with a click of the mouse. If you click on the primary here and cancel that order, it cancels the whole setup for you. All right. One other thing that I wanted to show you. Let me put in that order one more time. 1174.50, I buy. Everything you do in any of the order entry tools in TradeStation are going to be shown in all other order entry tools. So let me show you here on the chart, which is on the right-hand side. Let me move this these candles to the left. You can see my orders are displayed as lines on the chart. Gives you a great visual of where your orders are in relationship to the current market activity. Not only the current market activity, but in relationship to what's happened in history or a few bars back or earlier in the day, depending on how far back you want to look. But having those lines on the chart does give you a different perspective of what's happening to the market. With a, a chart open here, I can use a tool up here on my trade station called background dragging. When I click on it, it allows me to move the chart around. Notice that I have three orders in place. So the same three orders that I placed over here on the matrix here on the left hand side are shown here in my chart. And I can control those orders from the chart as well. You use that, you, I mean you do that with the help of a tool called chart trading. And I'm going to use the last couple minutes to show you that tool. I'm going to right click and enable chart trading because you do have to enable it. So right click on the chart, click on chart trade. And it does, let me close this out. This is just a little help window. It does bring up a trade bar on the right hand side, very similar to the one in the matrix. Notice how the buttons are somewhat, somewhat laid out in the same manner. But by turning on chart trading, when I right clicked on the chart, now I have the ability to click and drag these lines. So notice if I, if I raise my target, it does a cancel replace and I confirm it. So it changes it here on the chart. And I'm not sure if you noticed it, but it also changed it here on my matrix. Right now it's at 1175.90. Let's raise it a little bit more. So let's go to 1176. Release. I say yes. Notice how it changes here on the matrix. So now I have full control of my orders right from within the chart. Chart trading makes it very simple to cancel orders too. Let's say that I want to cancel all this. I click on the line. I'm clicking on the primary. Notice how it shows you those uh, little boxes. Um, it just lets you know what is selected on the screen. And using the delete key on the keyboard, I'm able to cancel those orders. I just press delete on the keyboard those orders are gone. If you wanted to place that same setup on, on the chart, notice that you have the same checkbox, attached OSO. And what I do here on the chart is I hold down the control key and I click right on the background. Confirmations are on for chart trading. You can see the setup where I have the primary and then I have the target and the stop. You can disable the confirmation for this as well and say yes. And notice how I see the orders on the chart and I see the orders on the matrix. All the order entry tools in TradeStation are going to be interconnected. So it doesn't really matter where you end trades. They are going to be shown on all different places where you can manage them. 
we entered this setup on the chart trading, we see it on the matrix. If we adjust the target here on the matrix and raise it, that's going to be raised here on the chart as well. The chart can be managed so you can see all the different orders and manage them manually. So it does give you that flexibility of managing your orders and monitoring your positions at all times. Okay, so I uh, there's a ton more things that I can show you, but uh, unfortunately we ran out of time and I didn't want to overwhelm you with information. We uh, highlighted three main features of TradeStation, which were strategy backtest, uh, scanning using radar screen, and now uh, order entry. So we use the matrix and we use chart trading. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of you have questions about the functionality. So let's go ahead and open up the floor to a Q&A. So feel free to submit your question through the chat and I'll take those questions right now. Some of you may be typing. Um, options. If you're interested in futures options, trading options on futures, we uh, do those in futures plus. Uh, those are currently not traded on the platform that you see on the screen right now or TradeStation. We have another web-based tool that allows you to trade options on futures. I'm um, pretty sure you're referring to future options. So you'd have to go that route. Uh, so talking to the guys uh, here at, at Optimus Futures, you can find out how to uh, go through them and open up uh, and trade those futures options. Ed, I see your question about um, automating the strategy. Here, when I go back to my strategy where I see the signals on my screen, it's all a matter of formatting the strategy. And the quickest way that I access format strategy is by double clicking any of the arrows. You know, if I double click on any of the arrows, it takes you to this format analysis techniques and strategies. You can also get here by just clicking on format here. On the very top, we have a format menu, and then you can just select strategies. It takes you to the exact same dialog. And from this dialog, you have the automation checkboxes at the bottom, allowing you to uh, display the orders and also automate the execution whether you want confirmations on or off that's all done here when you format the strategy now let's hear a question about displaying the profit and loss in the matrix as points rather than dollars let's 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 take a look let's take a look that's an interesting question so the question is referencing, let me fill this order right here so we can take a look. So the PL here on the left hand side is shown in US dollars right here. I believe there's another column here. Let me go to format columns and uh, let's see. Open PL, account currency, percentage. This is the cumulative. Cumulative, open PL, symbol currency. No, that's a good point. Um, I don't see a, let's add this to see what it shows us. No, that's a very good question. And I don't think it's, um, it's something that we provide. We have, you know, you can show if you're trading something that is denominated in a foreign currency, you have the option to either show it in US dollars or show it in and the foreign currency or show it as a percentage but um no not not in point size how many points you gained or, or not sorry about that robert i see your question about a pre-open price displayed on trade station for futures um there, I mean, all the prices that are traded in the exchange are pretty much uh, transmitted over to TradeStation. And you can see those prices in any window in TradeStation, whether it is a chart, the matrix, time and sales, all those prices are shown. I'm not really sure, maybe I'm not familiar with the, the pre-open price, 
uh, or the question that you're asking. So I apologize if I'm not understanding the question correctly. But every traded price in trade station or the exchange itself, if, if it's ICE or CME or CBOT, are transmitted over to our data network, and we'll sh and you'll, we'll we'll show you those prices in trade station. Yeah, if you want to remove the the open PNL, you can. So I can come here and remove the open PL. Click OK if you don't want to see that PNL column on the left hand side. You know that sometimes displaying the PNL makes us a little bit nervous, <laughs> especially especially if we're on the negative side. But uh, uh, yes, all the columns that are here are customizable, and you can change the order in which the columns appear as well. All right, if you have any more follow-up questions, um, feel free to email you know, Matt, who's in the room. Uh, I'm not sure if you have their contact information, but you're welcome to email me as well. Uh, you can share my contact information with the group as well. Um, Gnarly, I see your question there about uh, recentering, and, and yes, that feature is automatically turned on in the matrix. What he's talking about is the ability for the matrix to center uh, the matrix around the last traded price. Uh, if you want to disable that, you would have to right click. And uh, here it is, center at, you can center at last bid, mid or ask. Auto center, it's turned on at last, but if you come here to auto center at and remove last, I believe the auto center is not Disabled. Let me see. So you want to be able to disable that. So the auto center, I think, needs to be keep last visible. You can keep last visible. Center at. Hmm. Not really sure you can do that. I know that if you scroll up or down. See, the matrix will remain there for a, for a moment uh, if you wanted to place an order, you know, to that area. But uh, I don't think that's an option. That's a, a, a feature that can be turned off at the moment. Uh, Bonnie, in regards to the monitor bands, I did not format the parameters. Um, I just used the default settings. So um, here in the back test that I used here for the Bollinger Band. Didn't change any parameters, but you're welcome to. If you want to play around with the parameters of the Bollinger Band, it's just a matter of double-clicking the strategy and then formatting the actual strategy. You have access to uh, the price that is being used, uh, how many bars are being used, and the number of standard deviations if you want to play around with those parameters. But I just use the default parameters that come in TradeStation. I see. I see your your. Thank you for the clarification, Robert, about the pre-open price. And um, no, at this at this time, a trade station doesn't provide any uh, any any display of any prices like that. Okay. Um, so we just uh, display the prices that actually occur. You know, um, in the, from the market that are actually reported by the market and we just transmit those same prices over to your trade station so you're seeing every transacted price from the exchange. All right. Okay. So you have the email address for Matt. Uh, send him any questions you may have, uh, any follow-up questions, and um, he'll send those over to me if he doesn't know the answer, and uh, I'll be glad to answer those questions for you as well. But um, again, I just want to say that it was a pleasure spending this time with you. And, and hopefully we can, you know, strengthen our relationship and uh, continue to do business together. Thank you very much, everyone, for your time. And I'm going to pass over the microphone to Matt, if you're still there. Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. Um, Jesus, I wanted to thank you for this presentation. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to tell you it was a very thorough 
presentation, very professionally presented. I really enjoyed it. I hope the guys enjoyed it as well. Um, guys, those of you who are still here, I'm going to provide you with a few links. Um, I gave you my email, which is matt at optimistfutures.com. Uh, if you have any questions about opening an account with us or switching from your current broker, if you're not, uh, if you're not happy or you think you can have improvements to your platform um, and so forth. Um, as you saw, this is a very good platform to trade on. It's very stable, um, and you clearly see that the people behind the platform know their stuff. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a few links right now to establish an account with us. Okay, you can keep it. Um, so once you, I'm going to give you the main link, and um, it's right over here. Okay, so you have this link to establish an account. And once you fill that out, that will give you a choice of a number of FCMs. Clearly, you know, if you want to use Trade Station, you just go over there. Um, again, I just wanted to emphasize we charge the exact same commissions as uh, Trade Station. We don't have any um, upgrades or additional fees that we uh, charge on top. Um, it will be a pleasure to service you, and uh, I look forward to supporting you. If you have any questions about Optimus Futures, I'm going to keep it open for exactly five minutes just to give you a chance to see if anything comes through. Um, yes, we do offer um, options on futures. Um, actually, uh, Trade Station has a module, and clearly, due to constraints of time, we can't show everything. But they have a module that allows you to do it. Um, as far as trading the options, it's most I would say that um, most sophisticated platforms have both, and uh, and uh, and Trade Station has it. My pleasure, KB. Thank you, Scott. Good to see you here. I haven't seen you in a long time. Okay, guys, thank you to all of you as well. Again, if you'll, I see that there's no more questions here besides that one. It was a very thorough presentation, and I know you, it's uh, been uh, over an hour. So, again, if you'll have any questions, you're more than welcome to email me, matt at optimusfutures.com. Uh, you can always call me. I'll give you the number, okay, right over here. You can always call this number as well. Okay, guys, that's it. That's the end. Um, thank you for being here. And, again, there's a substantial risk of loss in futures trading. Best performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Uh, please be careful when you trade, okay? Uh, we're here to support you all the way. Again, this is Matt from Optimus Futures. Goodbye, everyone, and thank you for attending. I really appreciate you. Bye.